Dear brothers and sisters, saints in Christ, welcome to a new episode. This is our second episode in the Apocrypha books, which will be a series. Uh, we covered in the previous series, in the previous episode, uh, that uh, like from Coptic Orthodox priests, that what Father Dawud Lamai said was not correct at all. So we found that Protest Protestant did not uh, remove or deleted or excluded any books and also found actually that these books are not in the uh, uh, Jewish complete Jewish Bible or the, the, the so whatever 39 books that we have in our hands at the moment are the same 39 books that in the books of the Jews all right uh, I got an introduction for today's episode yeah to show you that uh, uh, you, you will get the message anyway. Uh, there are three points. I will mention one that we mentioned before, that I, but I mentioned quickly. We found in the previous episode that Aaron, he was not the high priest at that time, but actually he did a priestly job. When the people asked him, uh, we need like gods to see, like, like to uh, uh, to go before us, and he actually he made them the golden calf. But you remember that we found actually he was lying to Moses when Moses asked him, how did you do so? Then he said, uh, I just did give me the, the gold, I put it in the fire and uh, the, the, the calf came like that. So he actually was lying. I would like to show that this, uh, he was doing a priestly job and very easily to lie and to consider it as a miracle as like he would like to uh, keep you silent. How can like, you cannot object on a miracle? Okay, now our second point. Second point. Uh, Matthew 26. Now, the chief priests, this is what I'm, uh, I would like to, tell you, like to tell you today. Then the chief, now the chief priests, the elders and all the council sought false testimony against Jesus to put him to death. Matthew 26. So the high priests, the priests, the elders gather together and in their mind what? Not to find the truth, but to find a false testimony. Although commandment number nine in the Ten Commandments says, don't bear a false witness against your neighbor. So they gather together and they intentionally they breaking the uh, even the the, the the very basic Ten Commandments number nine over them. Again, the priests. The other one also Aaron was doing a priestly job, although he was not ordained yet. Second, uh, last one. Uh, now Matthew twenty-eight. Behold, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests all things that had happened about the uh, the resurrection when they had assembled with the elders and council and they and consulted together they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers who did this the priests the elders they gave them large amount of money to the soldiers saying tell them his disciples came at night and they stole him away while we slept. So even if you if you're asleep, how did you know the identity of those who actually came and stole the body? And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will appease him and make you secure because they have contacts, corruption. All right. So they took the money and did as they were instructed. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews till this day. This day actually means that the time Matthew was writing his book. It says nearly between 60 to 66. So it say 65. Don't make it easy calculation. So this means 35 years after the resurrection of Jesus Christ is still the rumor the, or the lie, I would say, the lie was there. And to prove this, by the way, if you read the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, which was written about 10 years before the book of Matthew, you will find that St. Paul was affirming the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which, which shows us like in the community at the time, it was, the two opinions were strongly in public that he rose or he did not rise. So I need to show you that this is the mentality of all those people wearing this special vestment of priesthood. Their idea, like, yeah, 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 it's a miracle. Uh, let's find a false uh, witness. Uh, uh, give them money and let's m make them to be our media and like to spread the news. 
the false news of course that he did not uh, die, he did not uh, rose actually uh, his body was uh, uh, robbed by his disciples all right now let's continue now now uh, continue our uh, episode uh, in today's episode we'll we'll discover or i'm going to expose more slanders and let's take uh, a quick uh, history uh, biblical history uh, listen quickly you know after solomon the state or the of israel was split into two northern state named israel and southern state named judah the northern one was exiled to uh, assyria uh, year 722 before christ and the southern one was exiled to babylon uh, actually it, this exile happened on three stages the first stage was year 605 before christ this is where daniel and the three young men actually were taken from jerusalem to babylon the second stage or second wave uh, year 598 before christ this is where ezekiel was taken as well third one which is the last one year 586 where actually the temple of solomon was totally destroyed and burned down to the ground and also the city of jerusalem and its walls and also the houses or or, or the palaces of the rich people at that time all right they stay there about 70 years and after that they came back accidentally also they came back on three stages first stage year 538 before christ about 50,000 jew uh, went back to jerusalem led by a person named zerubbabel second stage year five uh, sorry four five eight before christ nearly 80 years after the first uh, uh, first stage about 1600 people led by ezra the the, the scribe and uh, the scriber and the priest is, that's why I, I mentioned this story so led by ezra the priest and the scriber third and the last wave or stage year four four five about 13 years after the second one about 2000 people led by nehemiah ezra actually led a very big revival spiritually and also he did two uh, things uh, that I would like to focus on one of them he would like he wanted now to build the uh, altar but the, this means we we'll have to find priests but actually he found the priests uh, over the 70 years even the married from the, uh, the gentiles which is not uh, allowed so actually he kept like going through the searches uh, like the records like to find the genealogy of everyone they didn't have the chance to make like dna's at the time until he found the pure uh line, lineage of priests to make sure they are not mixed blood with the gentiles all right second thing he collected the uh and of course refined the holy books and and they divided them into like six categories he said ah uh, this is the law this is the uh, uh prophets and this is the psalms all right now let's now watch father Daoud Lamay when he says there are there were two collections of the old testament books he said one was done by ezra and the other one was done later on okay so let's watch this and come back again الحكمة وسفر يشوع بن سيراخ ينضاف عليهم تتمة سفر أستير وتكملة أو تتمة سفر دانيال وبعض الأجزاء الصغيرة زي المزمور 151 زي صلاة منسة حاجات صغيرة زي مكابيين الثالث دي كلها أجزاء شالوها الجماعة الغربيين لما ابتدوا يتبعوا العهد القديم في القرن ال17 اختلفوا بقى الجماعة دول بعد 15 قرن انه يا ترى الكتب دي أصيلة ولا لا يعني الكنيسة عاشت 1500 سنة من زمن ربنا يسوع تعتمد كل الكتب دي كجزء أساسي من العهد القديم في القرن ال16 وال17 لما بدأوا البروتستانت وهم اللي بدأوا يطبعوا الكتاب 
أقروا أن الطبعة أو النسخة العبرية الأصلية اللي هي بتاعت عزرة هي بس العهد القديم ودي طبعا ينقصها الأصفار دي ومن هنا الطبعة البيروتي اللي في إيدينا المنتشرة تلاقوا 39 صفر بينما النسخة الإبطية 46 كتاب وطبعا Alright So If we say that Ezra was in the 5th century before Christ So actually he was born year 480 before Christ and died year 440 So he was like for 40, like lived about 40 years But he did a big job by the way, okay? So what happened is Now we would like to focus on what actually Ezra did as a collection because uh, Father Dawood says he did the collection of the books that was available at the time which actually the, the whole thing that we know of today which is up to the book of Malachi all right so this means what he had all the books that we have in our hands now all right but you know Father Dawood Lama and all the, the Orthodox say there are seven books plus some additions to some other books all right now we are going to focus now on Ezra and the additions why the additions because you will find the additions all the additions that they claim it is actually uh, should be part of the holy scriptures but are not and they said the protestants uh, like excluded them we will find now actually those additions were actually available at the time of Ezra so my focus today is the collection of Ezra forget about the other collection now so when Ezra came, all the books were where? Were available. Okay, so now let's go now and find this stuff. Number one, the book of Daniel was available at Ezra or not? Of course it was because Daniel wrote his book years and years before Ezra. The book of Ezra is 12 chapters in our hands and also in the Jews' hands. But the Orthodox say, no, 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 it is 14, not only 12 plus some prayers so say about two and a half chapters my question is this means what has Ezra, uh, Ezra uh, oversight or didn't notice that Daniel had another like two nearly and a half chapters and he 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 he, he saw only 12 or actually he saw the whole thing and actually excluded 13 and 14 whatever they call 13 and 14 and the other stuff in fact if you go and read even chapter 1 for example of daniel and read 13 and 14 you will find the language is different and you will know very sure as we will come later not, but not in this uh, episode that actually it has some superstition stuff so now i'm cornering them how come that ezra collected all the books that before him and at the same time he missed two and a half chapters of daniel Second one, what about the book of Esther? Again, book of Esther way, way hundreds of years before Ezra. Hey, that's right. In our hands and the Jews' hands, it's 10 chapters. Orthodox will say what? No, 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 it is 16 chapters. So had Ezra oversighted or didn't find or excluded intentionally those six chapters, if you read chapter 10 and you start with chapter 11 and you will find this straight away they are not connected together as we will see later plus the superstition it so actually Ezra refined as he refined the lineage for priesthood he refined the books that were in the market we say at that time so he found those six chapters like not not true so he excluded them okay number three what about also Psalm 151 in fact they go up to 155 in some churches by the way but actually he said only 150 so uh, uh, what's the situation then so it was during Ezra so actually he refined it he, he put it away last thing the book of, uh, of Baruch or Baruch Baruch was a person you read about him in the book of Jeremiah he was the uh, you can say uh, the scriber for uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah was talking to him and he writes what Jeremiah said. All right. So again, he was before Ezra and his book is six chapters. The Orthodox insists, you know, it is there. Now, uh, Ezra did not take it. 
because it was there during Ezra. That, that's why I'm focusing now. All these books, uh, the editions plus the book of, uh, of, of Baruch, were written hundreds of years before Ezra. So, when, so Ezra actually refined it. So now with this situation, we realize now the collection of Ezra was correct. He refined it. So we should. So those additions that they mention, like for Esther, for Daniel, and uh, for the some of the Psalms and the Book of Baruch, the situation says definitely they are not uh, canonical books. All right. Now we ask now uh, like uh, the question: Had Ezra actually missed them? Didn't watch? Didn't observe them? Or at the time of Ezra, after he collected the books, actually, does this mean at that time the, the Bible was corrupted or was missing some stuff? All right. So definitely all what uh, Father Dawood Lama says and all the Orthodox, by the way, says that uh, about Ezra's collection, now we found that all these additions were before Ezra. This means what they say is exact, it is totally false allegations or lies. Okay, now let's watch another short video that Father Dawood Lame assures that the the that Lord Jesus and even the apostles he says they quoted some words, some words in my in my speech. Now we can find in every like uh, daily speech, you will find some words in, in those books. Like if you say the Lord, it's available everywhere, all right. Uh, and after this, yes, same side, some verses. Uh, but actually, he doesn't get us even one example. So let's watch this and come back again. This is the first book of the Lord. 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 This is the first book of في ذكر مثلا لعيد التجديد في انجيل يوحنا عيد التجديد ده مش موجود خالص في اسفار العهد القديم المعتاده انما موجود في الاسفار القانونيه الثانيه في سفر المكابيين اللي بيحكي لنا عيد جديد اسمه عيد التجديد لما يهوذا المكاب عمل احتفال بتجديد الهيكل والتخلص من المحرمات اللي كانت فيه. So he said Lord Jesus and the disciples Quoted some words and after this some verses and he didn't come with one example. This means what? He's cheating you. Second thing, he said to prove that first and second Maccabees are uh, inspired books because uh, there is uh, 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 a feast. It is not mentioned in the Old Testament. It is mentioned in the book of, uh, of John. Uh, it's called uh, renovation of the temple and actually this is a historical uh, like celebration it is mentioned there not as a feast that the Lord mentioned like in the Old Testament like the for example like the like the Passover or uh, uh, the Feast of Tabernacle no so it's a historical mem like memorial uh, or memory for uh, a historical uh, renovation right so he says because of this mentioned there and not mentioned in the other 39 books this means the maccabees are in a smart books really does it make any sense i tell you one thing by the way there is a, a very famous and uh, really highly regarded historian named josephus he's a jewish guy he was at the time of jesus by the way all right very accurately recorded plenty of stuff and he mentioned this and actually his book also was translated with the Septiguan translation. Does this mean this history book is an inspired book? Because actually it has plenty of the history of the book of the Jews, whether it is mentioned in the Old Testament books that we know now or the other uh, civil stuff. So mentioning the book, the, uh, like the, the, the Feast of Renovation doesn't mean uh, if it is mentioned in any other book, it is an inspired book because uh, I, I, I get you some some stories about history 
in the book of Josephus, and uh, then and it was translated by the way, and was put with put with the books of the Jews. So why don't we consider this also as uh, uh, an inspired book? All right. Now let's come to another point. Now there is a book named it's in Arabic named uh, the they call it the Deuterio, Deuterio canonical books, which is uh, normally we say it's apocryphal books. Uh, it is in Arabic, of course, but uh, let's go with the, through it quickly. Some stuff of it, like to, to assure that all what they say mentioned is also in this book is lies. So in the book. In this book, uh, now I show you the uh, cover of the book. Now let's move to page 12 and 13. Uh, part of the allegation how the apocryphal books uh, were not considered by uh, Protestants, uh, they will mention that actually there are some books, and they mention three as example, are not accredited or consented by neither the Orthodox nor the Catholic. And they said these books are totally uh, rejected by all Christians. And they said Protestant maybe were mixed up between those three books and some other of those ones in addition to the other seven apocrypha books. You understand? So let's quickly read this. I translated. Perhaps what was confused with regard to the position of the Protestants after their revolution against the Catholic Church on these books is that what they called the Apocrypha were not only these books, like the, the seven that the, that the Orthodox believe in, that the Orthodox and Catholic consider canon, canonical, but there were other books that were completely rejected even by the Catholics and the Orthodox and were not approved by any church, which now this were not approved by any church in the world, such as Ezra 3, Ezra 4, and Enoch, and others. All right? This is actually not true. Now, let's watch now, or see, or read together. Uh, you know, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church is was also communicated together, like with the Orthodox Church in year 451 uh, AD, in the uh, Council of Chalcedon. This church believes in 81 books, not only 73, like the Orthodox. All right, so now they said Ezra 3 and 4 and the Enoch are not considered by any church in the world. Now let's read what is the uh, Ethiopian church says about those particular three books. So let's read this together from the internet, by the way. It is called the Orthodox Tawhido. Tawhido means like God is one God. Tawhido Orthodox Church is even a church. To, to save time, I will not read the whole thing. They mention all the books plus, but they mention also that they believe what? In three Ezra and four and Enoch. Here we go. So we just read from the Egyptian book that those three books are not accredited, are not accepted by any church. No, they are accepted and considered as canonical books by a sister church to you, that you share the faith with them. You can go and pray with them, they pray with you, you marry from them, yeah. you accept their priesthood, you accept their baptism, everything. So actually, in fact, they believe in 81 books. They have eight books more than yours. This is three of them. So why let's say, None of the churches in the whole world accept these books. Actually, your sister church accepted them. So this means what? You're talking lies, breathing lies. Next. In the same book, chapter 13. Let's watch this together. Let's read this together. It says, these books, talking about the non-canonical books or whatever they call it or a book, a book, a book, a books about these seven books that Orthodox believe in. These books were listed in the canonical books that list in the apostolic canons. My goodness. Okay. This is not true. We read now. I tell you what, this book was issued I think back in the 80s or, no, or it could be late 70s. 
of the last century where there was no internet and you can't research all this stuff. So we were reading this stuff and were con considering it as very important stuff for us and we say, ah, oh, this is the truth. But now praise God for the internet that we can find all this. And is it true or not true? So now they're confirming that those uh, at least seven books that they believe in are mentioned. They said it is listed in the ca as canonical books in the list of the apostolic canons. Okay, that's fine. Let's confirm this. Praise God. Father Athanasius of St. Macarius or Athanasius Mary in his book Canons of uh, the Apostolic Canons, page 154, 155, it's in Arabic, but translated it. Let's read this together. It's, uh, uh, sorry, I did not translate this, but I quickly uh, show you some, some stuff here. It says the following, item one, he said, let these books like, be recognized and considered as highly whatever. And he mentioned the Old Testament. All right. He mentioned the Old Testament books. In the Old Testament, he says that the Psalm is only 150, so not 151. Second thing, in this list, he excluded the book of Esther. Oh my goodness, this means the apostles did not believe in the book of Esther, according to this. All right? Now, item three, now he is moving to a different category. And he says, let these books be like taught to your kids. What are those books? Ah, the wisdom of Solomon. Oh my goodness. So now he booking, he, he's putting, uh, he, he is now, after finishing the, whatever they consider as canonical books, now he says about the other books that were in the community. But he said, these books only, uh, like you teach the, the kids some of it. What these books? First one he mentioned, the wisdom of Solomon. Wow. While Orthodox is considered as, as like a canonical book. No, it is not. Second one, Judith. Ah, so it says Judith is just like a book that, yeah, you can read something, learn something of it. But it is not one of the canonical books, according to the canons of, apostolic, uh, of apostles. And also, three books of Maccabees. Oh, my goodness. Orthodox is only two. Now he says three. Next one, the wisdom of Joshua ibn Sirach, ibn Sirach, son of Sirach. So this book is considered as canonical with the Orthodox. And they said, ah, oh, this is the sure that it is in the canons of the apostles. No, it is not in, it is in the canon of the apostles as like uh, an extra book, but it is not a canonical one. It is not an uh, uh, inspired one. But it is, uh, yes, you can learn from it something, but it is not as uh, good or as accepted as the other ones. So, to quickly now, doesn't include the book of Esther, uh, does not mention like the full list of the non-canonical books, says Psalm is only 150, not 151, not 155 as the, also, uh, as the uh, Ethiopian goes up to 155, sorry. Uh, they go up to 155, not only 151. And it says that there's three books of Maccabees. So the whole thing is mess. So now you realize, dear brother and sister, everything they, they say is a lie, even in the book. They say, it is in the canons. Okay, you will get the canons. It is not in the book. It is in the canons as uh, like, a, a, like a very minor one. You can teach the kids, but it is not the ones actually uh, considered as inspired by, by the Lord. So, uh, now, last episode and this episode, we proved that everything they mentioned about it, to prove it, it is definitely a lie. It is not in the book of the Jews, it is not in the canons, it is not uh, accepted by everyone. And whatever in the book, the 39 books of the Old Testament that in the hands of the Jews at the moment, and we have it in our normal translation, are the books since the very beginning. So the Protestant didn't delete anything. And uh, what, what will you do now with uh, uh, Athanasius, the apostolic as you call him, and uh, St. Cyril and all this, book, uh, all this stuff. So it's the whole thing is definitely is a mess, is a big lie. So dear brother and sister, what are you planning to do now?
with this situation. But I will continue the series later on and you will feel the shameful stuff in each book, by the way. All right, please pray for the channel. Subscribe to it if you haven't. Uh, share the video with others, please. If, like, uh, if the Lord do, uh, encourages you to do this or you have the heart to, to serve the Lord in this way. And uh, give it a like if you think it's worth it. And unless the Lord comes, we'll meet again in another episode. May the Lord bless you all. Assalamu alaikum.